Hello everyone and welcome back. In this lesson we're going to talk about what in our opinion is the best way of adding one-time charges and recurring charges to your website using Stripe. And that is the Stripe checkout solution. So if we check here the Stripe checkout documentation, we can see that this is presented as the fastest way to get started with Stripe. So how does this Stripe checkout payment solution work exactly and how can we integrate it in our website? Let's go through the payment flow of a typical customer. Going back here to our ID, we are now in our sample application where we would like to start the implementation of the buy course button which is exactly what we will be doing in the next few lessons. Now imagine that Stripe Checkout is already implemented in your website. In that case, how would this work exactly? When the user clicks on the Buy Course button, the user would expect to initialize a checkout procedure. At this point, we are going to need to contact a server under our control, which is going to be implemented here under the server folder, and our server is then going to contact the Stripe checkout servers in order to inform that the checkout session has been initialized. We are going to be specifying what is the price that the customer is intending to pay, and we are also going to identify our website so that the Stripe checkout backend knows exactly who is triggering the purchase and where should the money be transferred to. So the customer wants to transfer some money from his bank account into your Stripe account. So we really need to tell the Stripe checkout servers that it's our website that is receiving the money and no other website on the internet. We also need to pre-inform the Stripe checkout servers that we want to take from the customer account a specific amount, let's say $50, which is the price of this course, as it's mentioned in our database. Once our backend server has contacted successfully the Stripe checkout servers and initialized the checkout procedure, then and only then will the customer be redirected from our website into a checkout page. Let's have a look at what this checkout page looks like. I have here an example of a checkout page for another product. We can see here in the URL that this is not a local host page. This is a page that is being served by the Stripe checkout servers. So once the user arrives from your website to a valid checkout page, the user is going to see here the product that it's purchasing and it's also going to see here the price. There is also some branding and you will notice, more importantly, a ready to use credit card form with all the necessary fields. We can also see here that this page served by the Strap Checkout server supports Google Pay. This could also support Apple Pay and other payment methods in the future. The great thing about this Stripe checkout page is that it was not developed by us. So this is a page under Stripe control and all the development associated to this page and its maintenance is being ensured by Stripe. So for example, all the complex business rules for credit card validation are implemented already in this page and they will be kept up to date over time. For example, there are countries where the user not only needs to provide the credit card information but also its address. So these rules are country dependent and they will be applied depending on the country emitting the credit card. Also, another advantage of using this Stripe checkout page is that if in the future other payment methods are available besides Google Pay, Apple Pay, etc., Stripe is going to add those payment capabilities to this page transparently without any development necessary on our side. Another advantage of using Stripe Checkout is that this page here is fully responsive. So if we open the DevTools and we select here a different device, we are going to see that on mobile this page already looks great. If instead of a phone we would use the DevTools to simulate, for example, an iPad, and we put this in landscape mode, we are going to see that this page indeed looks great in all devices. This is again another advantage of using this solution. It means less development on our side and more time to focus on the implementation of our product. Now, the user is going to eventually have to enter its credit card information here and is going to need to click here on the pay button. Now, what will happen when the user 
clicks the pay button. The Stripe checkout servers are then going to get contacted again. And this time around, the payment is going to go through. So the bank is going to be contacted and the money is going to get transferred from the customer account into your Stripe account. After the transfer has gone through successfully, the user is then going to get redirected from the Stripe checkout page and back onto your website. So your website is going to show the user a purchase ongoing page and your website is then going to wait to get confirmation from the Stripe servers that the purchase has been successful. So this will take a couple of seconds. Now Stripe is going to need some sort of way of contacting your website in order to inform us that the purchase was successful. So this is done via what is known as a Stripe webhook. So a webhook is a web service that we need to run in our servers in order to be informed of successful payments. Whenever a payment goes through, we need to then process the order on our side. So that is known as order fulfillment. We are going to add the course to the list of courses of this particular user. Once the fulfillment process is completed, we are then going to redirect the user to its new purchase. The user will then be able to access the product that was purchased. As we can see, the Stripe checkout solution, even though it makes it very convenient to add payments to your website, still requires some design and coding on your side. We are going to have to develop multiple services. We are going to, for example, need to implement one backend service to initialize the Stripe checkout procedure. We are going to have to redirect the user to the correct checkout page and we are going to have to implement a webhook in order to process order fulfillment. We will also need to ensure that only paying users can access the protected data. So there is still a lot of development on our side to be done, but we are going to go through everything step by step. And we will also re-explain every step of the process along the way as we implement it. So let's go back to the beginning of the checkout process. The user has clicked here on the buy course button. We need now to contact a server under our control and initialize the checkout session. So that's what we will be doing in the next few lessons.